Today I am here at a really cool piano store with a very rare opportunity to play two Yamaha Concert Grands. Now these are not just two Yamaha CFXs that happen to be sitting next to each other, no. This is a Yamaha CFX and then literally two feet away from it is a Yamaha CF3 which is the older generation of Yamaha Concert Grand. Now the trifecta of Yamaha Concert Grands would be a Yamaha CF, the first version sitting just on the other side, but unfortunately that's not here. But simply just having two Yamaha Concert Grands of different eras next to each other is a very rare opportunity and I thought it would be I thought I would make a really cool video to talk about the visual differences as well as the musical and playing differences between these two pianos. And so if you think that's going to be really cool, you definitely want to stick around and listen to both of these pianos because there are differences. They're both very good pianos, but they both have their differences, and so it's very, very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to walk you around both of the pianos and talk about the aesthetic differences and what makes the two pianos visually different from each other. And then I'm going to come back to the CFX. I'm going to play a quiet song, give my opinions on the piano, and then play a loud song. And then I'll move on to the CF3 and do the same exact thing, play a quiet song, give my opinions, and then do a loud song. So if that sounds cool, definitely stick around and check it out because both of these pianos are really, really awesome. So let's get started. Now, actually, before we get started, if you're interested in where I found these pianos, the uh, information for this store will be in the description of this video down below. It's a really cool store. They have an awesome selection of stuff, and just the fact that they have two Yamaha Concert Grands alone is absolutely amazing. So now let's actually get started here. And the first thing that you might notice about the Yamaha um, CFX is the fact that it's got some interesting styling going on. If you look here at the top of the corner, you'll see that instead of coming up and simply making a, a right angle and then going back, it actually comes out and makes a little acute angle. And that's kind of what separates the Yamaha CFX and as well as the CX line apart from other concert grands. And I'm um, looking over here at another Yamaha, and it has a slight acute angle, but it's not as sharp and distinctive as this. And Yamaha did this on purpose so that when you see a Yamaha CFX on the stage, you can see this interesting little point as well as a couple other interesting details and go, oh, that's the new Yamaha CFX. That's what I've been told. Now, if we look at the lyre down here, you can see that it's also a slightly more modern, simple design. It's just three pieces of wood that come down, and they meet flushly at the corners to make a very simple, straight, boxy-shaped lyre. And it's a very modern, very cool look. And we have uh, three pedals, as usual. There's also like some kind of adjustment links there, which is a neat feature. I'm sure that if a, a pedal was out of adjustment, you could go down and tweak that and make it work better or something. But that's a very cool feature, if that's what that's there for. I didn't know that Yamaha did that. We also have an interesting little like a bezel kind of thing going on here, where they, instead of just being a a straight piece of wood here, it kind of like folds in and then splits, and then there's two little corners running alongside. The Yamaha CF3 does not do that. It's slightly different, and I'll show you that in just a minute. One other thing that makes these pianos slightly different is the way that the edge of the music desk here also has an acute angle similar to the edge of the piano. As you can see here, it's a, it kind of slants up towards the ceiling and then juts back. And the, the music shelf itself is basically your standard music shelf. It does have a slightly unusual design where the corners kind of kick out, and then it has a very gentle curve to it at the top. It's a very cool look. Very, very neat piano. Now, if we take a look at the inside of the piano, we can see that it's basically your standard concert grand. We have a really cool Yamaha logo that I think they've been using for many, many years. I'm surprised they didn't use a more modern kind of styled logo on the CFX, which was there and still is their flagship piano. But it is a very, very cool logo, and I do like the way it looks. It's very fancy, and it's very, very cool. Now, when we look at the inside of the piano, we can see, once again, that it is essentially a concert grand in style. We have lots of big portholes. This is how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight gigantic portholes along the harp, which is a very interesting, like a pale orange color. It's really, really neat. And then you can see the strings here are really beautifully laid out. One thing that's kind of neat is they use these support beams on the lid, which is something Steinway does as well. Steinway has like four different support beams on the lid, and Yamaha has one here and then one right over there as well. There's also four hinges on the lid, too, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if other concert grands do that. I'm curious to see if the CF3 has that as well. So that's what the inside of the piano looks like. We have this really cool um, wood on the inside. It kind of reminds me of maybe walnut, mahogany, something like that. If that's not what it is, let me know. But it's a really cool look to have a different color wood on the inside of the piano. Many manufacturers do that, and it's a very, very cool look. We have a um, knob here that is used to just, it locks in place here at the top. And basically, if you were to move the piano, it, you can just lock that in, and then the lid won't flop open. Yeah, if it's being moved. This, I think this little peg goes into when you close the lid, so it kind of helps lock it in place and make sure that it's going in the right spot and it's not twisting any hinges. Now, an interesting feature about the CFX is that as you look at the rest of the piano, it's high gloss, and if you look here at the corner, you'll see the really cool Yamaha logo there at the corner. And uh, it's very big, very shiny, and it 
just advertises that you are playing on a Yamaha piano. But as you can see, it's high gloss. You can see my feet down there. But if you look at the lid prop, it's actually satin. And this is a feature that Yamaha put on because when the piano is on a concert stage, for some reason they decided that the lid prop should be uh, satin, but also the entire lid of the piano is actually satin so that when the piano is on a concert stage and there's stage lights up behind the piano, they don't reflect back at all the string players and woodwind people in the rest of the orchestra and make them go blind. So basically that entire satin black part up there is to help reduce reflections and make it a bit easier for the other um, musicians to play. So it's a kind of a cool feature. And uh, I think that's about it for the uh, visuals aesthetic of the CF3, I mean, sorry, the CFX. We have very large casters down there at the bottom like many concert grands do. They have a big fancy knob down there to adjust the, uh, space, basically like a brake. So you can tighten it and then the wheel will not turn or spin. And then if you want to move the piano, you can loosen it up and then you can roll the piano around. One additional thing I wanted to mention is that this piano comes with Ivorite white key tops. I had someone on my channel ask me like, what did I think of them? And uh, at the time, I was just like, they're about the same as real key tops and, you know, plastic ones. And they kind of are about the same as plastic key tops. They don't feel dramatically stickier than your traditional plastic keys, because if you don't know, ivory key tops have a very sticky feel to them. But these do have a slightly more kind of an off-white yellow color, and they are somewhat sticky. But overall, I think they feel about the same as a standard plastic key top. So now let's move over here to the Yamaha CF3. And as you can see right away, we have some differences. First of all, as you can see, this is that more traditional style of um, corner that I was telling you about. As you, you know, the CF3, it comes out, makes an acute angle, whereas this one here just comes up, kind of bumps out, and then just makes like a basically a straight angle. It's a little bit more than 90 degrees, I think. But it's basically a right angle here, whereas the CFX, for comparison, in case you don't remember what it looks like, is very pointy and has a much different shape to it. Also, the legs on the CFX, since you're right here, they simply just just go down straight and then just kind of cut off at the bottom where the caster is. Whereas on the CF3, they kind of they come down in the very same way, but then they they flare out and then become square again and get cut off where the caster is. The caster looks like it's the exact same design, although this is an older piano, so the casters have a bit of wear to them. It literally looks like the exact same caster design, so I don't think that changed from the two pianos. Also, while we're down here, we can see that the lyre is a more traditional design as well. Um, you'd see this on basically every piano that you would look at, but a CX line piano as I showed you earlier, has that more modern look. Also, those adjustable linkages for the pedals do not seem to be present on the Yamaha CF3. Now, that little corner piece I mentioned on the Yamaha CFX, as you can see here, it is a more traditional design where it comes up and then just kind of slopes in as a little wooden curve. And um, that's about what's going on there. And then also the key tops, they have a pattern in them that looks kind of like ivory. If you look really close, you might be able to see some lines in there that kind of look like ivory, but these are indeed plastic keys. This might have been an earlier version of ivorite, but these actually, these actually feel stickier than the ivorite keys. Um, this has a little bit of dust on it, so maybe that's what's affecting it, but the, uh, the keys feel almost more sticky than the ivorite. Let me come over here and try that out again. Yeah, I think this, these keys seem to be a little more sticky as far as the touch of them. Your fingers stick to them a bit better than the ivorite keys do. And I think that might be because these keys have like a satin finish to them, and so your fingers might grip them better, and, uh, but I do like that. If we look on the inside here, we can see a serial number that says S6045500. I didn't show that on the CFX. We'll go back to that in a bit and show you that. And also, you can kind of see in there the CF3 logo with the fancy uh, kind of like leafy flower. It's not really leafy or flowered, but it's an interesting little design around the CF3 badge on the harp. Now, if we take a look at the inside of the panel, we can see it's similar but also different to the Yamaha CFX. The portholes are smaller. They're less, they're not really, they, they weren't gaudy on the CFX, but they're less, um, they're kind of less in your face on the Yamaha CF3. We have a Yamaha badge that was present on the Yamaha CFX. I didn't mention it, but this is a different style badge. It's actually part of the harp. The CFX badge was a little bit different. You probably saw it. It says since 1887 under it. And then if we look back here on the piano, the rest of the design is similar, but again, slightly different. The CFX had different style of braces here. They were a different shape. And also this piano also has lots of this cool wood on the inside. It looks a little bit different. It's got more horizontal grain lines in it than I remember the other one. It looks more striped, but it also has this really cool wood on the inside. This also has a little lock here on the rim of the piano here. It has a Yamaha badge on it and it's a slightly different shape than I remember the other one being. Uh, this is also here for the peg and then if we look at the uh, lid prop we can see that it is shiny unlike the CFX which was satin. And since we're here at the CFX if you take a look 
at the lid here, you can see that it is indeed a satin finish, whereas the rest of the piano is actually gloss, as I was telling you. So now let's head back to the CFX and take a listen to what it sounds like. So here I am back at the Yamaha CFX. Again, you can identify it because of the interesting little uh, point there. And I'm going to first off play a slow, quiet, soft, gentle piece on the Yamaha CFX to show that it's excellent at doing that. What I'm going to play is a uh, short little piece that I wrote to help demonstrate pianos and kind of test out the treble as well as the mid-range of the piano. And I think it does a pretty good job. Hopefully you enjoy hearing it on the Yamaha CFX. Now sometimes what I hear in a piano and what the recorder hears in a piano is slightly different, but what I'm hearing is it has a beautiful, bright, crystalline treble that's very clean and very clear and very beautiful. And then the mid-range of the piano has a kind of a bright edge to it, but at the same time it's incredibly rich and incredibly deep sounding, and it's a really, really wonderful sound. Uh, for many years I've just thought of Yamaha as just being a bright piano and I didn't really like them, but the new Yamahas, the new CX line, and especially the CFX, is really rich and very beautiful and very, very warm, even though it also is bright and when you play it loud, it is incredibly powerful. So now the next song I'm going to be playing is the Pirates of the Caribbean theme on the Yamaha CFX, and hopefully you enjoy that as well. There's a reason that Yamaha CFX pianos are taking over concert stages all over the world. I remember several years ago there was a big, I think it was a Chopin competition, and traditionally everyone chose Steinway as the piano, but many people at the time were choosing the Yamaha CFX over the Steinway D at the time. And that is why. I'm absolutely breathless after playing this piano, and I don't usually get that way after playing concert grands. It is a rather energetic song, but it's just this piano is so incredibly powerful and uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. Now we are, we're in a big room too. It's not like this piano has been shuffed, stuffed into a closet and then the sound is just echoing everywhere and it sounds louder than it actually is. We're in a very large room with quite a bit of reverb and this piano absolutely fills it up. It's fantastic and probably my favorite thing about the piano is how it can go from playing whisper quiet as I demonstrated earlier to playing really really boomingly loud. I mean you know like if you can play like something like this.
and then moments later you could just go back to going. It's just absolutely incredible to me how quickly you can change directions in this uh, piano. Of course, that's not really how that song actually went. They didn't really go in that order. But it's, it's just an example of how you can change directions to go from playing extremely quietly to extremely powerfully loud. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. And again, the bass in this piano is so rich and so full, but yet it's bright and it's powerful to fill up concert halls or to fill up orchestra and compete with an entire orchestra behind you. It's an absolutely amazing piano, and in case you can't tell, I really love it. Now, if you're curious about the action, I had no issues whatsoever playing uh, Pirates on it. It's a very difficult song to play on a piano with a bad action because it's got these big chords, and if you're trying to throw them around on the keyboard, a piano with a bad action was, does not handle it. So a piano like this, I had no issues whatsoever playing that piece on it, and so it has a very, very light action. It's, it's a bit, it's a light, but it's also a little bit substantial, I'd say. I mean... Yeah, I see it's a bit on the substantial side. I was just playing a little bit there to kind of figure out how I felt about it. It's light, but it's responsive, and it's also a little bit substantial. It's kind of in between. It's in a bit of an odd gray area there, but it's just a fantastic piano. So now let's go check out the CF3 and see how it stands up to the Yamaha CFX, which I absolutely love. So here I am with the CF3, and like I said, I'm going to start off by playing my original composition, the soft, soft, so gentle. Oh wow, the soft, slow, gentle piece. I'm so mind blown by the CFX. I can't even talk right. So I'm start first. I'm going to start off by playing that soft, slow piece, and then let you know what I think of the sound, and then play Pirates on this piano as well. sounding piano and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I really like this piano as well, but I personally think the CFX is just better and I can't quite describe what exactly is better about the CFX, but I think in the treble here, I'm going to play it again just to give you an idea of what it sounded like again. The treble is a little bit less clean and less clear on the CF3 than on the CFX. If I go over to the CFX real quick and play that a little bit again, and here's that same thing on the CFX. delicate and more gentle and more crystalline and honestly in my opinion more beautiful. Now once again there's nothing wrong with the way the CF3 sounds it's just I believe that the CFX sounds better than the Yamaha CF3. CF3. So let me head back over there and I'll talk a little bit more about how that sounds and then I'll also play Pirates on it. Now the mid-range on the Yamaha CF3 I feel once again isn't quite as clean, it isn't quite as clear as on the CFX, but again there's nothing wrong with it and it's a very good sounding piano. I just think that since I have the CF3 and it's, um, it's the, the, the new version of it, the CFX, I really feel that Yamaha has really improved the Yamaha CFX over a very good piano already, which is quite impressive. So now I'm going to play the same Pirates of the Caribbean theme on the Yamaha CF3 to give you an idea of the difference of the bass and the mid-range when it's played loudly, and hopefully you enjoy that as well.
So let me know in the comment section down below if you hear a difference between these pianos, and if you do hear a difference, which one do you like more? Now, I personally really, really love both of these pianos, to be completely honest with you, but I think that the Yamaha CFX is a tier above the Yamaha CF3, as it rightly should be, because it was the new and improved version of the Yamaha CF3. Now, one thing that, that the recorder probably is not going to be able to pick up, because it's in a different place than I am, is the fact that the Yamaha CF3 somehow manages to sound slightly more distant than the Yamaha CFX when I play played really loudly on the CFX, the sound just washes towards me and I feel like I'm sticking my head at the car window and the wind's blowing by me real crazy because the sound is just so loud and it's, it's right there, you can touch the sound. Whereas with the CF3, when you play it loudly, it still projects and it's still very loud, but somehow it's a little bit different and I can't really explain why and you probably aren't going to be able to be he hearing that in the audio because, like I said, the recorder's not where I am. But that is something that I'm noticing about the Yamaha CFX. They've somehow managed to really just improve the, the cleanness of the sound as well as the projection and the presence of the piano when you're sitting at the piano. And I honestly find it incredible that they took a great piano, which is the Yamaha CF3. I have there's nothing I dislike about this piano at all. And then they somehow managed to make it even better with the Yamaha CFX. And I can't wait to, I don't know if Yamaha has a new Contra Grand in the works 20 years from now or whatever, but I can't wait to see what they're gonna do to make the CFX even better than it is. Now one thing I did find kind of interesting is these keys, like I mentioned earlier, they have a kind of an ivory look. If I look at them in the light, I do not see the different grain patterns that you will see in real ivory keys. Uh, one thing, if you're curious about if a piano has ivory keys, look at them in the light and see if the grain patterns are different on every key. And if, they're, if they have kind of a natural bumpliness to them, that's one way to tell. And these don't have that. They're made to look kind of like ivories, but they don't have that. But yet, I feel that my fingers stick to these better than on the Yamaha CFX, even though the CFX has the ivorite key tops. So I find that kind of funny that the older version of the CF3, which has that kind of, like I said, it has like a matte kind of finish on it, which I think your fingers will stick to, and they feel a lot more like ivory than the new ivorite key tops, which are a shiny, polished uh, finish like normal plastic keys. That's just something I noticed. I do really like these key tops. The new ivorites, to me, feel a lot just like standard plastic keys. That's just one thing I noticed about the difference between the two pianos. The action of this is slightly heavier than on the Yamaha CFX, but again, I had no real issues playing uh, that difficult piece with the loud chords going back and forth. It's, I had no real difficulties playing it. So, hopefully you enjoyed this really interesting comparison between the Yamaha CF3, which I'm at now, and the Yamaha CFX, which is just over there. Again, the chances of someone finding these two pianos literally two feet from each other is extremely rare, and I can't believe that I was able to do that today. Once again, if you're interested in where I found these pianos, the store's information will be in the description of this video. They're a wonderful store. They have a really cool selection on all kinds of neat pianos, and just the fact that they have these two pianos here is so amazing to me. I love it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on these really awesome pianos. I've got uh, videos on my channel of Bozner for Concert Grands and Steinways and Fazioli's and all kinds of other cool uh, pianos on my channel. If you're interested in checking that out, you can go check that out. And if you want to subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.